Anish, we're really happy that you made your way over here from New York. Welcome to our office here in San Francisco. Aditya and I, we're excited to work with you. Thank you. It's always a pleasure being in San Francisco with you all. You're building a company that's addressing enterprise reliability with AI agents. How do you think about how AI agents are so much different than the traditional way of doing observability in the enterprise today? Yeah, absolutely. And I think about what observability is, I think of it as essentially giving you eyeballs into your data, right? It's, it's pretty dashboards at the end of the day. So you have all of this different data that's streaming through a system that you need to use to understand the health care, the health of your system. And um, it helps you produce these dashboards to help visualize it. But when you have an incident, despite all of these massive dashboards that you have, despite spending so much money on the problem, it is still incredibly painful, right? You'll have these teams of engineers, 20, 50 engineers on call, basically dumpster diving through these dashboards until you maybe find one that is useful, till at some point some engineer will have this aha moment where they're like, okay, I get it now, what happened? They'll find the root cause and they'll revert the chain that caused it to happen, right? But as you can tell, this flow is incredibly painful and laborious where it's constantly de de disrupting engineers, it is causing a lot of downtime, and despite all of these dashboards, the problem still remains. What AI systems are doing, and what specifically Traversal is doing, it's about having swarms of AI agents replicate the work that these teams of engineers are doing, but in order of magnitude quicker. Rather than taking 50 engineers an hour, two hours, you now have an AI agent system or a swarm of agent systems that does it in less than five minutes and does it 24 seven. And I think that's what the promise of these AI agents are, which is automating this complex, laborious workflow that people are doing on top of software, rather than dumpster diving through dashboards. CodeGen is the talk of today, mm -hmm. and AI-generated code is being utilized everywhere in every single enterprise at this point. How does that impact how you think about the swarms of agents that you're building? Yeah, to me, it's a natural evolution of the software de development lifecycle. It's certainly improved developer productivity, but I think the amount of AI-generated code hitting mission-critical systems like payments, infrastructure, is still not that much at the enterprise. And the problem is that as more and more code gets written by AI systems, less and less is going to be understood by humans. And so when something goes wrong, we're going to have a hard time actually debugging it because we didn't write the code anymore, right? And so we don't have the context. And these systems are getting more and more complex. And so what's going to happen, I think, if all of the code or maybe 99% of code gets written by AI systems is that humans will basically spend all their time on call, right? Just firefighting because we don't know how to write the code and we can't understand what happened in the code base. And so I think the hope of what Traversal does is that it alleviates that problem. You've told me many times in the past that you and the founding team were built to solve this problem. Tell us about how your backgrounds in causal machine learning lend itself particularly well to this space and problem. Yeah, absolutely. So if you think about modern software systems, they're written on top of complex microservices. And so it's like this large network Right? And so when something breaks, there's almost like this epidemic that flows through your entire system where everything seems like it's breaking at the same time. Right? And you never know whether something of a given spike is a symptom of the issue, a spurious correlation because something else is wrong, or truly the root cause. Right? And this problem of trying to figure out which thing is the cause versus just an effect or a spurious correlation is the pain of it, right? at, the heart of, at its heart. And that's exactly what causal machine learning as a field is about. It's about getting AI systems to programmatically learn cause and effect relationships from data. Right? And that's what we spent all of our time studying in, and researching was this particular issue. And um, in some sense, uh, what causal machine learning is about, it's about the way you can learn cause and effect relationships from data is you run experiments, you run an A-B test, and you see what caused what. And the problem is in most real world systems, you can't run an A-B test. And so you have to find natural experiments in your system. And doing that at scale when you have hundreds of billions of time series is what our research was about. And now you can actually bring that to this problem, especially when you marry it with LLMs and AI agents, it can happen autonomously. And I think that's what now is possible in this world. And maybe even more broadly speaking, I think um, the world of AI is changing super quickly. The models are changing every day. New architectures are coming out. You have to be fully on top of uh, the, the state of the art. Right. And I think coming from the world of AI research, we are naturally very inclined to keep abreast of what is, what is the most modern state-of-the-art with AI. And I think that's really surfing that really 
elegantly uh, is, I think, really important in this day and age. That's why I think AI native teams are going to win, especially when it comes to really complex infrastructure problems. Mm -hmm. You're one of the first companies in the world to actually productionize agents. Tell us about some of the surprising results you've seen in the wild with your early customers like DigitalOcean. When we first started, we worked with smaller companies, right? And we found certain architectures worked where we went through manually maybe a thousand previous incidents that they had across these different companies, try to see what the meta workflow was, put that into some sort of React agent workflow, and hope that any new incident kind of fit into this meta workflow. Now, once you hit a real enterprise company like DigitalOcean, our accuracy went like 0%. It just did not work. And so that was the first surprising thing, is that every incident is, is almost like a snowflake once you hit the enterprise. What was a big breakthrough for us was trying to find ways of building a system where we weren't trying to manually imbue into this agentic framework previous workflows that humans did. But instead, try to exploit what these LLMs are good at. So once we could figure out architectures where the quality of the answer scale with the amount of tokens you were spending on the problem, that was key. And I think that has served us really well because now we can generalize across different companies a lot more easily. The other thing we learned was what really builds loyalty with engineers is if you can solve the most complex incidents, the ones where they show up and they don't know what to do and they're kind of feeling helpless. If you can help there, that's when loyalty is built. Not when you know, they kind of have an idea what to do and they just have an AI system do various steps of it. That feels incremental. It doesn't really engender that rabid loyalty that they will be with you for a long time. The thing we learned is take on the hardest problem, ratchet up the technical risk that you're taking on. I think that's where developers will fall in love. Looking ahead, what can engineers expect from the platform that you're building? If I think about what we're doing, it's about finding a needle in a haystack. Right? And this haystack is composed of logs and metrics and traces and code and so on and so forth. And the needle is some change in the system. I think over time, uh, the goal is to basically make the haystack bigger and bigger. So rather than waiting for traversal to begin its investigation once an incident begins and once an alert begins, can you really begin it? Can you begin the investigation the second a customer logs onto a system? And you know, uh, traversal is monitoring what they're doing and it's actually surfacing an issue before it even becomes an issue. Right, and potentially connecting it to business metrics like engagement or spend or whatever it might be. Right? So you're having a more end-to-end -end view of observability both with the business logic and the engineering health of the system. And the second part of it is like moving towards self-healing. Right? So not just identifying the change in the system that caused the issue to happen, but actually finding ways of fixing it uh, so that you don't really need a human in the loop and it's self-healing. Right? So I think that's the, those two things I'd say are the, the dreams of where we're going over the next year. When a CIO is evaluating Traversal, what are the strategic advantages that you bring to bear that would make them pick you over incumbents? Yeah, I think it, it fundamentally flows from um, the way observability prices itself, observability companies price themselves. It's all based on the amount of data that they're storing, right? And it's expensive. And that's why it's so fragmented, because every, any big company is probably using five tools. They're using probably Datadog and Splunk and Elastic and Dynatrace and Grafana and GitHub and ServiceNow and probably many more, right? In, even in-grown solutions or homegrown solutions. And none of these companies are incentivized to give you any sort of insight into data that's stored in anyone else's company, right? Because they're not getting any money from that. And the problem is if you want to root cause an incident, you have to be talking to these four or five systems simultaneously. And that's what we found almost without fail across every company that we see. And that is why I think a new company such as ourselves, which is the Switzerland, where we're not pricing based on the amount of data we store, but based on actually the outcome, right? Um, I think that is why a company such as ourselves is, has a good chance of succeeding in this space because uh, we can actually take in data from these many disparate sources. We should be pricing a lot closer to the outcome, which is the amount of downtime saved, right? Amount of customer downtime, amount of customers that are affected by the incident should be minimized. And second, how much developer productivity did you increase, right? Now, are, you, are engineers spending 20% of the time on call or maybe only 5% of the time on call? And so I think those two things are pretty, are pretty well quantified for, for CIOs. And if you can re reduce it by a sizable percentage, I think they'll be very happy. How do you envision the future of on-call and site reliability engineering in the age of AI? Observability and site reliability engineering, broadly speaking, is like about the healthcare software systems. And so I think an analogy to healthcare is, um, is useful as we think about where it is today and where it's going. So, I think of it almost like the Maslow hierarchy of needs. There's the first need is, let's say you're having a heart attack, 
right? Nothing else matters. Nothing matters five minutes from now. You have to solve the problem right now, right? And I think that's the equivalent of having a production incident. You, nothing else matters. You have to just solve the problem right now. And the second stage of need would be where you have like a chronic condition, right? So you have to think about that at a weekly basis. It's very hard to plan three months ahead, a year ahead. And I think that's the equivalent of having a constant stream of alerts that you're dealing with. Like it's almost like a death by a thousand cuts, right? And the third stage is where you know, you're like life hacking, right? Uh, where you're thinking about how do I increase the longevity of my life? How do I make sure my quality of life is, is a lot higher? I think that's the equivalent of, of engineers getting time to think about the architecture of their system, planning five years in advance of what, you know, what kinds of, of new loads and infrastructure they can take on over a long period of time. Right? And so I think, given that analogy, I think where the state of affairs today with, with on-call and site reliability is like you're having a heart attack twice a day, or, or at least twice a week, and dealing with a number of chronic conditions. Right? And I think and once you place it like that, you realize just how broken the system is. And so I think if, if Traversal does its job right, then those first two parts of your needs, which is those uh, production incidents, those heart attacks, and those chronic conditions, which are the constant stream of alerts, will be taken care of. And so then engineers will actually get to do the most creative, fulfilling parts of their job, which is long-term system design and architecture and, and life hacking their, their software systems. So we've been working together for only a brief bit. What are some of the lessons that you've taken away from the KP team so far? Being Indian, the way I think about it, when you, when you get married, you don't just marry <laughs> your partner, you marry the family. There's a similar kind of thing that's happened with, with Kleiner. Um, not just married both of you, but I feel fully connected to the entire KP family. It's almost like a full court press of, of making this company succeed versus just a one-to-one -one relationship with you know, Mamoon or Aditya. You know, I'm, I'm great friends with Liam and Suzanne and Jubin and Lauren. You know, so I feel uh, the whole KP team is, has my back. And I think that's a very unique thing about, about this firm. Thank you so much, Anish, for stopping by. We're so excited to be partnered with you and look forward to this incredible journey ahead. Thank you. I appreciate it.